Take a look at the clock next to me. You can see it's ticking away uh, with deliberations tonight. Let's go straight out to Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who is in Waukesha, Wisconsin tonight, uh, inside that courtroom waiting for the verdict along with all of us. Um, Chanley, we've heard from this jury tonight um, so far. What are they saying? What are they asking for? We've heard two questions so far from this jury. They're requesting exhibits, Vinny. Here's a look. They want exhibits of the Erica Patterson's photo. They want uh, the map that we've seen over and over again uh, throughout this trial that really outlines the route of the Christmas parade. They also wanted uh, video of the dancing grannies being struck by the SUV. And they just uh, sent another request to show, show that at a reduced speed and a new one where they want a couple of more exhibits. Now on the screen right now, that's not the video that they were shown of the dancing grannies. That's cell phone video. The video that they were shown is a different angle. It's from the front of the dancing grannies, like a surveillance video of one of the stores on Main Street type of angle where you can really see it happen and unfold from uh, like if the dancing grannies are coming down Main Street and you can see the red SUV headlights on. That's the first thing you see. And the SUV barreling through the middle of the dancing grannies. One stays on top of the hood for several yards before falling off right in front of where this camera angle is. It's very, very difficult video to watch. That was played twice for the jury. They stay in the jury room, even though we can see the video in the courtroom. Uh, they don't have to come in the courtroom, Vinny, so that's uh, something good to know. And then they wanted to reduce speed of that exact video, and that was played at 40% uh, speed for them, and now they're requesting to see the surveillance video, which they did actually just play. You probably saw it behind me. Uh, uh, from the White Rock Elementary, not far from Frame Park where that altercation with uh, Erica Patterson uh, took place minutes before the parade massacre. Okay, so the jury, very busy. They're looking at exhibits. As you said, the, the, the route, the map of the route, the picture of Erica Patterson, his girlfriend with the bruise on her face, um, video of uh, the SUV striking the dancing grannies, but at 40% speed. Um, the jury deliberating, um, Daryl Brooks staying, is he staying in the courtroom or are they sending him out of the courtroom as, as this jury deliberates? What's, what's the plan there? There's a holding cell nearby. When I've been in there, uh, they take him to the holding cell nearby when everyone kind of leaves the courtroom. Uh, when the judge is not on the bench, so he has a place there. He did request to go to his actual jail cell because it's shower night, apparently. Uh, the judge did mention earlier that she may make arrangements or order that be done, and she wants him to stay close by, obviously, uh, because the jurors are sending notes and asking questions. Uh, so everyone's nearby. The prosecutors, I walked with them out to, to do my live shot here. They go to their office, and that's where they're standing by. And again, there will be about 45 minutes, though, if there is a verdict, Vinny, for anyone to come to the courtroom to watch it unfold live. And I was going to ask you about that because, you know, victims and families often want to be there for the moment. Sometimes it gets a little more challenging when they work into the wee hours of the night. But are any of them standing by at the courthouse or are most of them within uh, a short driving distance and would try to make their way there for the reading of the verdict tonight? There is a spot for the family members to be here in the courthouse. They have their own private room. They had that room throughout the trial in which they could watch the live stream if there wasn't room inside the actual courtroom for them to sit. So they may be there, but they weren't in the courtroom when I was in there when the judge was taking up the jurors' notes and questions. There are several members of the public still hanging out, uh, going in and out of the courtroom to watch. But as far as the family members, I didn't. I don't see them hanging around anywhere. So they must be um, either in that room. That's for them or close by, and they would have 45 minutes to come back, Benny. Now, a big part of this trial has been the defendant himself and the incredible roller coaster of mood swings and what he's going to be like on any given day. Um, number one, how would you describe his demeanor today? And relative to that, is there any extra security in the court uh, house? It looks like, there wait, it sounds like the jury has another question, Chanley, behind you, so let's, let's listen to the judge really quickly. 
version of Instruction 50. Uh, we are in the record. Subject matter jurisdiction. I decline to address that further, sir. Will it be approved for the record? Sir, my earlier decision, I stand behind it. My written decision. Your written decision is not based in any law or fact? Hold on. So right now, the judge uh, reviewing a note from the jury. We're waiting to hear what this latest question is. They've already requ requested a bunch of exhibits. Um, check the jury clock. You can see they've been deliberating uh, for some time now. And the judge has said the jury will stay as late as the jury wants to stay. They were working on the court schedule. But now we're working on the jurors' schedule. And they know if they finish without a verdict tonight, they will be sequestered and will not be going home. So uh, sometimes that puts a little more pressure on a jury to work a little bit longer, a little bit harder uh, to reach that verdict. But there are 76 counts in this case, which makes it extremely time-consuming and difficult. Um, even in a case like this where there wasn't much of a defense put forth. So have to get every yes. We do need them to the Yes. I thought it was two people that got excused from the jury. Three. There were fifteen. No, I'm saying I thought it was two from the sixteen. No, only one. Well, you did say two. You said one had got excused before, and then another one was getting excused. No, I only excused one. We've had fifteen since. The first juror was excused. So what happened to that second one that had the COVID scare? What happened with that? Mr. Brooks, I addressed all of that on the record. I'm not rehashing that now. No need to get in your feelings. It's been a long day. I'm tired, too. I would agree. But I'm not, I'm just letting you know I'm not going to rehash that stuff. I, I was just, uh, I just thought you said two. You said two on the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The record to reflect, I have the 12 jurors who have been deliberating, plus the three alternates who were sequestered in a different uh, jury room. Um, I want to give you kind of a modified uh, instruction from the one that you've heard many, many times throughout this trial. Of course, for the 12 who have already started to deliberate, uh, do not deliberate unless you're in the jury deliberation room. Um, and that will mean from when you are discharged here tonight until you come back tomorrow in the jury deliberation room. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else 
until you are deliberating in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. I realize you are sequestered. We've taken away all of those things, but I'm just going to keep reading through this. If you come in contact with the party's lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the party's lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I know you're not going home. You're going to uh, another location, but do not discuss this case among yourselves with any other juror until you are back in the jury deliberation room tomorrow. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After this trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result uh, in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at the trial. With that, you are all excused for the evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. I'll rise for the jury. Open my mic. Open my mic. All right. So uh, the jury's going home. They decided they don't want to stay late. It was up to them. They made the decision that they would not be able to come to a verdict tonight. And, you know, maybe they're tired from a long day, or maybe they've really got some things to debate and discuss as they go through the 76 counts that they've got to uh, deliberate on. So uh, it's not going to be a super fast right, verdict. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess. We'll see everyone tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, 8.30 a.m. Uh, I trust that uh, the jail will give you a shower. So whether that's tonight or tomorrow morning before you come back to court. Yes. But I will order that. In the morning. Yes, 8.30? 8.30. I'm not giving that there. He's got to be some tonight type thing. <laughs> That's when we start court every morning, sir. No, we haven't did you. You need some switcheroo. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. I mean, he's very concerned about that shower and uh, not concerned about the verdict. Unbelievable.